Welcome to Clued in Mystery. I'm Sarah. And I'm Brooke. And we both love mystery. Hi, Brooke. Hi, Sarah. I'm sitting here recording with you, looking out at a little skiff of snow, and the sky is pretty dark today. It feels a little mysterious. Mm, Well, that's perfect, because that's what we're talking about today, is mysteries set in the winter. And many of us rest and spend a little bit more time indoors during the winter, and the colder, darker nights are perfect settings for mysteries. In today's episode, we're going to discuss some of our favorite mysteries set in the winter. So it's winter here in the Northern Hemisphere, although this year, at least on the West Coast of Canada, it's been a little bit slow to arrive, and so I've had to turn to stories to get my fill of snow. Winter really lends itself to one of my favorite setups, a remote cabin that becomes cut off because of a storm. As a reader, you know that nothing good will come of that. Countless authors have written something with that premise, drawing inspiration from Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None, although that book isn't actually set in winter. However, her Murder on the Orient Express, she does use a train caught in a snowdrift to trap the suspects. So Brooke, maybe we can talk about that setup to start. Yeah, that sounds great. And as you said, it's like the perfect setting because we have got a lot of darkness, we've got short days, and then uh, the the storms that can oftentimes, uh, you know, thwart someone's travel or keep them indoors when they would love to get away. So um, yeah, I've been thinking a lot about how this, I don't know if if it's really a trope, but weather becomes just as much of a character in the story as the setting, because as I said, it can prevent or sometimes assist the villain. Oh, absolutely. Like evidence can disappear in the snow, right? Mm -hmm. Footsteps that, um, you know, you might see one hour have been completely covered up if you're in the midst of a snowstorm. That's right. Or conversely, because there's snow, you could perhaps capture footprints or be able to see something, you know, scratched in the windowsill in the frost. So it's a really fun, like I said, almost like a character for a author to play with as part of how the the story unfolds. Well, and and I think the weather, particularly bad weather, um, can really add to the tension, right? You feel trapped, you feel cold, you feel uncomfortable. And all of those characters are feeling the same thing. Um, And I think you feel that more with mysteries that are set in the winter than than ones that are set in the summer. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I was thinking about one of the books I read this week to get into the mood was uh, The Siddiford Mystery, which is an Agatha Christie from 1931. And I was noticing the words, the adjectives that she uses. And, you know, she says chilling, um, stark. Uh, the person was numb from the cold. Uh, they were snow blind. And many of those you could still use any time of the year. But because you're then coupling it with the actual temperature and the storm outside and things like that, um, like you said, it just ramps it up. And I also thought it was interesting because all of those things are describing you know, how you feel in the cold, but there are also ways to describe fear. So it really uh, just brings that tension to life in, a, in this wintry mystery scenario. Oh, that's such a great observation that she's using, using that language in, in multiple ways. I love it. So I, I realized that I've read a few books recently that, um, are set in winter. And I don't know if it's because it's the season. And like I said, in the opening that like, we just really have not had much of a winter here yet. But one that came to mind is in a dark, dark wood by Ruth Ware. So it's, I, it's probably set more in the fall. Cause I think it's like the first snowfall that happens. Um, but it's that, that same setting, right? It's, it's a group of people have gone to this remote cabin and strange things start happening. And um, you know, it ends in, in death. That's funny that you, uh, bring up a Ruth Ware book, which I also love in a dark, dark wood, because on my list, when I was thinking about, you know, what 
what books have I read that would fa- fall into this category? Another Ruth Ware title came up, which is One by One. And in this one, she takes the group of people to a luxurious resort in the French Alps, and they're going to have a corporate retreat. And of course, the snow comes and this creates a locked room or a closed circle, however you want to look at it, scenario, and someone doesn't come back from the ski slopes. Well, so that reminds me of... uh... I think it's uh, The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. And so it's a group of friends who um, every year for New Year's, you know, go on this great trip. They go to different destinations. And this year they're going to a remote hunting lodge. Things things do not go as planned. Um, And it's that, you know, I, I... I, it's been a while since I read it, but I, I think there is um, a storm that um, that comes in and they're, you know, they're feeling trapped. They're, they're um, you know, a little panicky, right? Mm-hmm. Because things are not going well and they can't get out of, um, they can't get out of there. Yeah. So the idea of the remote cabin or even mansion or something that can happen in any season, but it's so convenient because the snow either, you know, makes the roads impassable, the power's probably out. That's one of the ways that the tension can get ramped up is that they can't call out. Um, it's dark and uh, their transportation probably can't get to them. So it's Winter time seems to be a really great way to create that isolated group of people. And, you know, I will say cabin fever is a real thing. Yeah, you mentioned, Sarah, that winter is late in coming, and, and, and I'm in kind of the same general geographical area as you, and same. We haven't had much winter yet. But um, in 2016, in in my area, we had what is now – fondly or not so fondly referred to as snowpocalypse because we had like one of those 30 year uh, weather situations where we literally would get like a foot of snow a day and it lasted for like six weeks. And I mean, if you didn't continually plow the driveway, you literally couldn't leave with your car. And I will admit it's a panicky feeling when you think, you know, I can't go somewhere if I need to go there. And th- thankfully I was just with my, uh, my loved ones. I wasn't with a group of, uh, coworkers <laughs> or friends from years ago or anything. So everything turned out okay for us. <laughs> and so that reminds me of a book that I read uh, not too long ago, um, called An Unwanted Guest. And so in this one, this is by uh, Sherry Lapina, uh, in this one, um, a uh, group of people, strangers, uh, go to a, a boutique hotel in, I think they're in Vermont. The actual location might not be, um, might not be revealed, but, you know, somewhere um, where there's lots of snow. And um, sure enough, uh, despite them being complete strangers, someone is out to get them. And uh, same thing, the, you know, the power goes out, um, the roads are blocked because of this storm, and it takes a few days before any relief comes, and by then, it's too late. Yeah, it, and it's interesting, isn't it? We pick this book up, and we, you can probably tell from the cover what kind of thriller or or puzzle mystery in the case of some of these uh, more golden age stories, what you're getting yourself into, but we don't tire of that. Like we realize this is going to be a group of people cut off from the world and something bad is going to go down. But we um, suspend that dis- disbelief because it's a really fun ride. And another one of those uh, that sounds really similar to the one you just described, Sarah, is, um, and I read this a few years ago, The Sanatorium by Sarah Purse. This is a 2020. Um, and this one, I, I had the French Alps before. This one's in the Swiss Alps. Um, <laughs> and someone's taken this old abandoned sanatorium and converted it 
to a high-end hotel. And um, Detective Ellie Warner is on a much-needed uh, vacation, and she's gone to the hotel with her um, her significant other, and then this estranged brother and his fiance, who because they want to celebrate their engagement, but the fiance turns up missing, and with the storm happening and it's closed off access to the hotel. Uh, poor Ellen must uh, take the case, even though she was trying to be on vacation. So that one's a little bit of a twist because she is a detective by trade. But of course, it wouldn't have been a case she would be on otherwise, except she's the most experienced person on the scene. So so that reminds me of a Niall Marsh book, Death and the Dancing Footman. The setup is that um, a man has invited guests to his home and it ends in murder. And uh, uh, Niall Marsh's detective, Detective Allen, is nearby and he ends up having to go and um, investigate and kind of uh, figure out what what has happened. Um so, I mean, this device has been used for decades by authors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's still fun. Uh, and there are a few, you know, if someone is looking for uh, some golden age examples, there are some uh, collections of short stories. So I know the Agatha Christie estate has released um, in 2020 uh, a book of collected winter short stories called Midwinter Murder, Fireside Mysteries from the Queen of Crime. Uh, and that includes some that are set around Christmas time and some that are just set in, um, you know, in the winter. Um, and Martin Edwards has compiled uh, a book of short stories called Crimson Snow, uh, Winter Mysteries, and that was published in 2017. And like all of the collections that Martin Edwards puts together, it's, you know, some authors that uh, readers may be familiar with and some that they, um, that might be new to them. I haven't actually read that collection, but um, I have read other collections that Martin Edwards has put together and and really enjoyed them. So I'm sure that this would be um, just as enjoyable. Yeah, that's great. Um, What was the title of that Martin Edwards book again? Crimson Snow. So that actually brings up um, something else I was thinking of is because of the whiteness, you know, it's a vast covering of white um, that any color you get, and this could be either in film or in, you know, in a book you're reading because the, the pictures are formulating in your head, you know, whether it's a blood trail or some bright colored scarf, that's the the clue that's left behind. You get that very stark comparison with mm-hmm. color in the winter um, because it's void of color and then something uh, odd happens, right? Right. So great title, great title for a, a group of winter mysteries. Uh, what about TV, Brooke, or films? Are there any that you can think of that are set in the winter? Um, well, I, that's, I'm glad that you asked, Sarah, because I immediately, when we talked about this topic, thought back to uh, a movie that we had in my house. I'm pretty sure that we recorded it from the television on a VHS machine. But because we owned it, my sister and I watched it many times and it's called Dead of Winter. It was filmed in 1987. The um, actress is Mary Steenburgen. And then it has Roddy McDowell and a very creepy Jan Rubes. Um, But it's a great story where uh, the premise is this actress gets hired for a role, but she has to go uh, do the filming um, on location in this wintry mansion. And of course, when she gets there, she soon learns that things aren't what she expected them to be. And there's a couple of really great twists. I rewatched the the film last night. It is on Prime here in the US. Um, and even though, yes, there's some hokey 1980s stuff about the movie, <laughs> <laughs> it still holds up. I still love the twists. Yeah. So check out Dead of Winter if you want a wintry mystery. And she does try to escape in the in the ice and snow and can't get it done. 
Something new I learned about Dead of Winter uh, on this viewing is that it is actually inspired by uh, The Woman in Red, which is a Golden Age novel by Anthony Gilbert. And Anthony Gilbert is a pen name for Lucy Beatrice Mallison. So maybe we'll have to look up Lucy, Sarah. Oh, that sounds like a great idea, Brooke. Yeah, as we learn more about different Golden Age authors. Um, so one show that I thought of is Trapped, which I think is still on Netflix. Um, so it's Nordic noir. An Icelandic town becomes cut off due to a storm. And of course, there's um, a murder that the police need to investigate. Uh, and it's very, well, it's Nordic noir. So yeah. um, you get the you 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 get the sense of feeling trapped just like the title says mhm mm exactly there it is so atmospheric right those books or those films from nordic noir are so um like you know it when you see it there's just that feeling about them so any time of the year if you need a wintry fix that's a great uh group to look at which actually was a question I was going to ask you, Sarah. Do you tend to read books set in the same season? Or do you like to read opposite? Like if you need a summertime fix in the winter or vice versa? That's a, that's a really good question. And I don't know that I'm that deliberate when I choose what I'm going to read. Um, I mean, I think... Over the summer, I did read some, like, books set in summer, uh, and it was almost too much, right? Because in those, it, it was very hot, and <laughs> and the summer was hot, so it was it was a bit much. So maybe I should have been reading winter uh, winter books in the summer to help me to help me cool down. But yeah, I don't I don't know that I'm I don't know that I can say that I'm that deliberate. Yeah, I what think about you? that I would. I would agree. I'm probably not that deliberate. Um, but I do find myself like around Christmas time choosing things that are holiday themed sometimes just to get into the spirit. So I guess I do it a little bit. I can understand the um when it's hot, you need something to cool you down, at least mentally. Um one thing that we see a lot in the winter mysteries is talk about fire and or like the fireplace. Uh, they're grouped around the fire because it's a probably a big, cold, damp place. Um, and I, I enjoyed that because that's often how we read them or uh, where we like to be in the winter, cozy around the fire. So I, thought, I just think that that is a nice point about them. So uh, an unsolved real-life winter mystery that I came across, Brooke, is um, the Dyatlov Pass in the Ural Mountains in Russia. Nine skiers set out on a multi-day journey and were all found dead after they failed to reach their destination. Some died of exposure and some died with brutal injuries. Douglas Preston, who has authored several fictional mysteries with Lincoln Child, wrote a piece for The New Yorker in 2021 exploring one of 75 theories about what happened uh, in this 60-year-old mystery, and it was a really fascinating read. We'll include a link to The New Yorker article in the, in the show notes. Um, but it was an event, like I had never heard of this before. No, that's fascinating. And you know how much I enjoy reading um, true crime. So I'll be looking into that link as well. 75 theories. Apparently. Yeah. Yeah. And one of them being like, you know, a Yeti attacking them. Yeah. I mean, the, the theory that, um, that Preston explores is, it seems pretty reasonable to me. Um, but it, I think it's one of those things that they just may never actually get uh, get an answer to. So interesting. Well, thanks for this conversation, Brooke. I think um, I've added a few new titles to my list of, of uh, books to read in the in the winter, and I hope you have too. I definitely have, Sarah, and I hope that our listeners have too. And thank you guys for listening today to another episode of Clued in Mystery. I'm Brooke. And I'm Sarah.
And we both love mystery. Cluding Mystery is written and produced by Brooke Peterson and Sarah M. Stephen. Music is by Shane Ivers. If you liked what you heard, please consider telling a friend, leaving a review, or subscribing with your favorite podcast listening app. Visit our website at cluedinmystery.com to sign up for our newsletter, The Clued in Chronicle, or to join our paid membership, The Clued in Cartel. We're on social media at Clued in Mystery.